a very important phase in my life that was very influential to my life and I guess my career have been hackerspaces or to be more precise, one particular hackerspace. And so today I want to tell you about hackerspaces and why you should be looking into it. Hackerspaces are community operated physical places where people share their interest in tinkering with technology, meet and work on their projects and learn from each other. And hackerspaces.org is a great place to discover hackerspaces around the world and maybe find out if there's one nearby to you. So let's have a look at hackerspaces.org and at the end of this video I want to just give you a couple of tips from my own experiences with hackerspaces and how I would recommend for you to approach this. I think I should start with a disclaimer. Because yes, this is an IT security channel and these places are called hackerspaces, but this doesn't necessarily mean that these are places just for security. Actually, they are probably mostly not about security. As this introduction page here writes, they are places where people can share their interest in tinkering with technology, meet and work on their projects, and learn from each other. So hackerspaces deal with anything technology related. A lot of people are doing electronics and tinkering, taking things apart and building. They do things with Arduinos and other chips. They might have the ability to etch their own PCBs. They might do like woodworking and have maybe a laser cutter. Many of the people are programming, writing certain applications, often even just to kind of like make the hackerspace work. Tools for organization or tracking the electricity or whatever it might be. And then it's a physical place where there are people. It's a social place. People are talking with each other. You can meet people. You can ask other people questions and other people can ask you questions. It's an interactive space. It's not a school or university. There are no dedicated instructors. You are not entitled to a one-on-one -on -one learning session or walk in there and expect that you get taught everything. It's a community where you have to give, but you can also receive a lot. And the hackerspace I was in was an amazing community and I learned so much there. So hackerspace.org is mainly a wiki where people can share stuff. So some hackerspaces are more active on here and others are not at all. Also here you can already see a couple of pictures from how it looks like inside of a hackerspace. When I see pictures like this, I immediately just feel really comfortable and at home. This is like how a hackerspace has to look like. This is just beautiful to me. So I guess you can see here a 3D printer. Definitely some tools here. This looks maybe like a breadboard here, but some very interesting cables going in there. So, so I have no clue what they are doing here. Here in the corner, you know, all the different drawers with probably electronics parts in there. People in boxes storing their projects. I, I, I'm just assuming, I, I don't know for sure. I've never been in this one. Here, a hackerspace in New York. Oh my gosh, I miss hackerspaces. Oh, it looks so awesome. Look, even in New York, do you see that logo back there? That's Club Mate. Wait, you can buy a bottle of Club Mate in New York? It costs $5 though. That's pretty expensive, but obviously they have to import it from Germany. For all the Berlin hipsters, please go on Wikipedia and check the history of uh, Club Mate, especially the role of Club Mate in the hacking culture. You know, this is why Club Mate got famous. But let's see what else we can find on here. So let's check where we can find hackerspaces. All hackerspaces and then here they have this list of hackerspaces as a map all around the world. So you can see they mostly exist in Europe and the US, a, a couple of them also in India. So Africa, South America, Middle East, come on guys, uh, create some hackerspaces. So let's maybe just randomly zoom into somewhere here and discover a new hackerspace. Okay, so I'm now here in Bordeaux in France. There's a hackerspace called La Bix. Lab. Meet us on every Tuesday and Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. They seem to at least still exist. This page was last updated just this year and they have 15 members. So let's check out their website. Okay, so their website is obviously in French. Not getting very far here. Just hoping maybe to find some pictures or something. <laughs> Documentation, projects, the projects. Ah, here we can see some pictures. Maybe some 3D printing stuff, I don't know. <laughs> the French is hard to interpret. Is this for automatic planting plants? So yeah, so on here you can check if there are hackerspaces around you somewhere. You know, let's check out a hackerspace in a country that I've never been to and I have no clue about. Let's check out uh, Armenia, Iterate Hackerspace. The hackerspace is a safe place where you can come and use your Debian Linux computers, experiment with open source code, 
and learn new technologies and make new friends. But only if you have Debian. If you are arriving there with your free BSD, no friends. Oh, there's no cost to join us. So there are 25 members. Looks pretty central here in the city. Check out their Twitter and website. Uh, the last tweets are from 2017. And the last time they updated this was also in 2017. So I wonder if they still exist. Armenia's only hackerspace. Place of learning for hackers. Interested in all things programming, teaching, growing. Thank you, ISTC. They used to have here events on Facebook. Oh, and their website is down. That's unfortunate. I guess they don't exist anymore. There are so many hackerspaces in Germany. That's awesome. So I guess let me show you the hackerspace that I spent a lot of time in. The Stuttgarter hackerspace, Checkspace. We are a group of nerds and technology enthusiasts. I haven't been in this hackerspace in like the past three years or so. I was very active there, I believe in, so they were founded in 2009. So I think I was introduced to that hackerspace in maybe like 2011. And so I was very active in like 2011, 2012, maybe 2013. Around that time frame, I was very active there. This was during my bachelor's degree. So anything I'm telling you about now is years old. I don't know the current state uh, of this hackerspace. But it's definitely a very big hackerspace. Check out the size of the rooms, 430 square meters. There are multiple rooms and a big community space and a kitchen. It also has quite a large number of members. But again, I don't know exactly what the social situation nowadays is. Like I said, I was very active there a couple of years ago. Yeah, and when you go to the website, it also tells you if the space is open right now. And so you can always check if somebody's there and basically anytime you can go there. Let's see, projects. So this is like the community space. This is the door you come through and back here is the kitchen. Here you can see the kitchen. Members are often also cooking. I wonder how old these pictures are because I definitely remember this painting, the spider and the, the lab code rack. Oh yeah, memories. So somebody was building here some furniture, I guess. And here you can see like the longer hallway with a couple of rooms to the left and the right. So this is the electronics lab. Uh, this is something I basically haven't seen. This happened after I left. Look at that amazing food, heroes. More food, nice. Club Mate. So for me, the Shack space is very special because like, I was full on nerd mode. I just loved to be there, the atmosphere. I was just so motivated to be in that space with my laptop and just working on stuff because you have all these other nerds around you. It's, it's such a nice feeling. Also, I was always interested in electronics, but I never really started. But then there were so many people doing electronics that this was like my introduction to it. I was able to ask questions and people were sitting down with me and showing me how to solder, were explaining the PCB to me. But just a reminder, don't be entitled and think you deserve here some kind of one-to-one uh, -one instruction. This all just happens naturally. And of course, I also sat down a lot just with my own Arduino kit and trying out stuff. And then when I had a question, I was able to go somebody. And maybe they have time, maybe they don't. Maybe they also just wanna concentrate to work on something. So be considerate of other people. Also, I joined the Shack Space pretty early and I immediately had contacts to some of the founders. So it was a very welcoming and open place to me. Uh, I saw the Shack Space grow from fairly small numbers to you know over 100 people. And so for me, this was a very positive experience because a lot of people were very welcoming and wanted people to come. So right now I'm not part of a hackerspace anymore, even though there are a couple of Berlin. Now, to be fair, I didn't check out multiples in Berlin. I basically have only been to one and it's a nice place, but these communities, again, they are like social communities, you know, I'm not different than anybody else, so I don't deserve any special treatment. And so of course, you know, they are close friends already for many, many years. And so it's kind of difficult as an outsider to get into that. So be aware of this, right? Like they like to hang out as a social place for them. And so don't think that if you show up, everybody will turn their head and be happy to have you there. That it that might not be the case. But like anywhere where you make friends, sometimes it just takes time. If you keep going there and be nice to people and try to be open with people, eventually you will be able to build the relationship to the people there. Also through this hackerspace, I made really good friends. Some of them have been extremely pivotal to my career, were able to get me into some invite only conference, uh, or even recommended me to, for my freelance job that I'm doing right now. These are all connections I made through the hackerspace. So I guess to summarize, the key takeaways are 
hacker spaces are not really about security. They are about people that just love technology. You will find people that are interested in electronics, general tinkering, arts and crafts too, woodworking, just building stuff, just making stuff and oftentimes kind of with a focus on technology. But there are also often people that are interested in security. So I obviously also met a few people that showed interest in security as well. It's a social place with nerds. So, you know, you will find very different kinds of people there. Some people you will like and some people you will not like. And you need to make sure to not cause any conflicts. You need to be respectful. Don't annoy people. Don't shoulder surf. Never shoulder surf. Don't stand behind people and just stare into their screen. Not cool. Try to have the confidence to talk to people and ask them, but also expect them to say no. And it's okay to say no if they don't have time or if they want to concentrate on their own stuff right now. Participate in the community. And this means not only being there, but also maybe become a member and pay, but also clean. This is like the biggest problem of hackerspaces, organization and cleaning. So be a good force, okay, and help cleaning. At least pick up your spot where you have been working. Don't be arrogant and be humble when you are there because it's very likely that one of the members around you who can hear you right now knows it better. Also try to be the open, welcoming person, you know? Be nice to new people. Don't be judgmental for the stuff they don't know yet and help them. And if you are aware of all these things and you participate, you can find an amazing community that is so different from like society outside. It's such a weird and loving and nerdy place, but it's also full of humans. So it also comes with all the problems of humans. I make it sound maybe like this amazing fairy tale place, but <laughs> and in my memory, it kind of is. But I know that I was just very lucky in the way how I got into it and the Shack space was just very awesome uh, when, when I went there. Can't speak for it now. I don't know how it is nowadays. I know that many of the people that I met there and have spent a lot of time there have also moved away. I don't even know if active people there would even still know me from back then. Who knows, maybe they are all new people. I know that a lot of people that I have spent time at the Shack Space with have also moved away. So no clue about the current state of the Shack Space. Maybe it's even better than it was back then. I, I have no clue. So while it can be a fairy tale place, it, it might not be, okay, don't be disappointed if you don't like it or if the people were a bit reserved or rude. It's a social place. Also, each hackerspace has a lot of rules. It's necessary for a social place like this. So for example, at Checkspace, we had these stickers on things. Either it was public, uh, usable if you got the instructions for it, or private and you must not touch it. So just because things are in this space, it doesn't mean you can just use it. A laser cutter at the worst could be very dangerous, but you could also just easily break it if you don't know how to use it. So make sure to ask about the rules of the place and how you should behave. I guess the only thing I could say is don't be a dick and hopefully the other people are not dicks to you either. Also, when you are traveling to a new city, check out if there's a hackerspace. You could write to their mailing list or maybe you can find somebody else from that hackerspace and say that you are in town and you would want to know if you could come by for an evening. For example, when I have been to Canada and Toronto a couple of years ago, I did exactly that and then I spent an evening in the hackerspace. So yeah. Go check out hackerspaces.org and I really, really hope for you that you can find a great community there.